Hey, good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for November 6th, 2018. So uh, midterm election day, everyone, I want to encourage you all to get out and make your voices heard. Get out and vote. Um, we're probably going to see a market that stalls and staggers around today. A lot of a lot of uh, choppiness as a result of uh, the market just waiting for results from the midterm election. So please, there should be plenty of time to get out and vote. And do me a favor, if you have voted in the comment section, just say, I voted. I would appreciate hearing that. Um, everyone, um, remember, these videos are meant to, uh, there's there's no... Um, no bias that I try to put into the the charts here. They're they're meant to help everyone with their trading. And um, if this is the first time you've seen these, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Click that follow me button if, if you happen to be watching this video on Facebook. Also, click those thumbs up buttons and drop those comments. That really helps the algorithms show these videos to more folks. And I truly, truly do appreciate, appreciate it. Also, please, please please feel free to share this video with any friends and family that you might think could benefit from this information. So with that, everyone, hey, do me uh, also another favor. Stick around to the end of the video. I have a couple of trade ideas. Even though I kind of am not recommending trading today, there's a couple of ideas that you might want to put on a list and pay attention to them. So let's take a look at the markets here and let's take a look at these indexes without trying to put any bias on this trade and, uh, you know, really excluding uh, the midterm elections here on what price action is telling us. First off, let's take a look and notice that we had a resistance area right here that we broke yesterday, broke back above that and we're holding on. But currently futures are pointing to a slightly slightly lower open this morning so we could pull back toward this and this is beginning to look like well a little bit of a consolidation in here right we're just kind of bouncing around against this resistance area in the diamonds now let's keep in mind after we know the election results uh, so wednesday morning expect the market to gap we don't know which way it's going to gap i don't even want to try and predict what which way it's going to gap so let's keep that in mind when you plan your trading for today and realize that any trade you hold into the close is subject to a gap and may be a higher risk position um, hold as a result because you know anything is possible during an election so let's take a, a one other look here and um, let's realize that if we do rally up into here we run into the next level of resistance if we were to fail we do have a little bit of a support right here hopefully that would catch us in that failure um, to hold on but please keep in mind um, any major sell-off like this will typically see another pullback of some magnitude. So I'm not suggesting that it will come all the way back down here, but we certainly could see a pullback um, at any time in this market. And, and that's a pretty normal bottoming action if we are actually going to bottom. Let's take a look at our moving averages here real quick. And you can see we're, we're up above the 200-day moving average here on the diamonds and kind of wedged um, between there and the 50-day moving average, just kind of in this uh, zone. We're not really sure which way we're going to go from here. So let's just keep a close eye on that and plan your risk carefully today. If you do plan to trade, watch that carefully because anything is possible tomorrow anything at all is possible tomorrow huge significant gaps would certainly be in the in the realm of possibility for tomorrow let's take a look at the spy spy not as strong a position here as the dow you can see that what we're doing is we're dancing along this resistance area here and that resistance area really carries back here through all this congestion and, and junk in the in the SPY chart. But um, here's the problem is we have not broken above that 
200 day moving average. So that 200 day moving average is serving as a natural resistance. And if you notice here, the 200 day moving average is starting to slightly bend lower and the 50 day moving average is dropping the 20, the 34 EMAs are dropping down here to create a fairly significant resistance area right in here. So we'll want to watch that closely. Now, if we do happen to get a rally, I would expect this area right here. This is a pretty substantial resistance area. If we do get a rally, I would expect that to hold as resistance, at least for the short term. And any failure that occurs in here, we would look for these levels right in here to try and catch us as support. So anything is possible after a midterm there's just no doubt about it let's take a look at the nasdaq nasdaq very similar here in the fact that we are challenged by the 200 day moving average and we actually had follow through to the downside yesterday giving us a a true failure at the 200 day moving average but we ended up rallying back up by the end of the day and as you can see right here um, we're moving a little bit lower, gapping a little bit lower this morning. So remember, uh, you know, a lot of folks look at a hammer pattern as a, a good bullish sign. But remember, a hammer pattern that is potentially in the middle of a down move, um, it means nothing at all. <laughs> a hammer must have a follow through candle to v validate the hammer. And they're much more effective when they come at the top or a bottom of a pattern. So keep that in mind. Right here, um, we're being challenged, and, and I would expect those resistance levels, at least for the for the uh, uh, today, to hold just simply because I think volume will likely be light and choppy today as a result of the midterm elections and just simply waiting. So we have a, a major resistance level up here. If we do happen to catch a rally after the election, right up in here, would be a pretty good target to look for. And if we fail, of course, we're going to be looking for these levels down in here to try and um, support the market. So keep that in mind. IWM. IWM has just been one really sick, sick index. But it's had a nice rally here from a very oversold condition. Let's keep in mind, though, that we are way below the 200-day moving average, and we are just days away from the 50-day moving average diving below the 200-day moving average in what they call a death cross. Hopefully that doesn't... Uh, isn't um, some kind of prediction of the future or anything like that, but certainly not a good sign when we see that 50 day moving average diving down through that 200, creating a, a substantial resistance area here in IWM. Now, let's take a look at just the support resistance in this. Certainly, we broke the downtrend, rallied up. We've held so far above this level of support. That's a good sign that we're, uh, we're picking up. It's possible we could catch a little bit of a consolidation in here. But the midterm elections can certainly change that. And if we rally, I would look at this resistance level right up in here to be significant and that really corresponds um, up in here just a little bit higher with that 200 day moving average so come just a little bit higher and right here we slam into a real heavy resistance zone so um, we'll have to pay attention to that if the market does rally off the election if it happens to fail then of course what we're going to be looking for is these support areas down in here to try and hold uh, this market and prevent us from sinking uh, to new lows overall. So hopefully that doesn't occur. I don't want to see any new lows, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of a pullback. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX, I'm not giving us a whole lot of clue here, but at the moment we're holding on to this price support. And we have basically a double top high up here where we have failed 
to break through to new highs. But now holding down here, we're kind of creating that W type pattern. Now, if that W pattern were to soar through this area, then we've got some trouble ahead. Um, don't want to see that happen. We want to see this continue to drift on lower, come back below that support area and give us a little bit of protection for um, any fear creeping into the market. But again, midterm elections, anything is possible. T2122, the four week new high, new low ratio, you can see actually gained a little bit yesterday as we moved up in this market. So we're reaching a point for the short term where we, we don't have near as much room to the upside as we do potential room to the downside, but we do have room to the upside. So that's the important part to note here. We could certainly move higher. We're a long ways from the bearish reversal zone, but we're all also significantly far removed from the the bullish reversal zone um, as well so anything is possible in here um, it's just interesting that we have rallied and spiked so much here without any kind of a pullback which makes um, this move uh, a potential move lower very dangerous because we haven't really tested lower to uh, check those support levels Let's take a quick look at the economic calendar for today. If we look at that economic calendar, you can see we don't have a lot on here to worry about today. We have the jobs report, um, or excuse me, the jobs report this morning. Um, nothing. Um, you know, significant expected to change there. And I wouldn't expect the market to really be focused on that. Red book is uh, this morning. And then we have a bunch of uh, bond auctions and treasuries today. Uh, nothing really there to worry about. Let's keep in mind, we have the FOMC meeting that begins on Wednesday. And that's also going to be kind of weighing on uh, the mind of the market here, waiting for that announcement on Thursday, which is odd. They just slipped it one day because of the midterm elections. But um, we're going to be running right into that FOMC meeting. And we all know that the FOMC has been really focused on increasing rates. Um, if they increase rates this week or this month, um, the market's not going to like that very much. So hopefully they would hold off on that. But just keep in mind, there'll be some stress here in the market. Um, once we get past the mid midterm, we'll be thinking all about the FOMC. Okay, on the earnings calendar to calendar today, just a massive number of earnings coming out today. Um, um, well over 350 companies reporting earnings today. Those earnings will be coming in kind of fast and furious, but so far the market really hasn't responded much to earnings this morning. And it really is because the market is trying to decide how it's going to deal with this election. One of the things I'd really highly recommend is that if you do plan to trade today, um, trade a small position because we really are moving into the realm of gambling here, trying to trade around um, a midterm election like this. We all know that there will likely be a very substantial gap tomorrow. Um, it could be up, it could be down, and there's really no way to know. Now you can pretend that you can predict but I got to tell you, there's a whole slew of people that end up um, going broke trying to predict the market. Let's just, um, you know, calm down here a little bit. Remember, we don't have to trade today. We don't have to um, try and predict or guess or anything like that. We can simply wait and we can move into the market once we know what that reaction is going to be and have a better edge to trade it. Um, if we wait for that news to come out. So kind of keep that in mind. And remember, there is no shame, no shame at all in waiting for the market. So really quickly, I talked a little bit too long here. Um, really quickly, a couple trades I'm 
kind of focused on um, right now. Um, I've mentioned FireEye before. FireEye moved up, broke through. We've got this inverted head and shoulders type pattern down here. Moved up into this area nice and sharply on res um, earnings and now has pulled back. So a little bit of a hammer pattern here. Um, I wouldn't suggest that today it's going to move um, higher and I wouldn't really want to suggest that you should be picking up any trades today ahead of the midterm but this would be one to watch this nice move up this pullback if this can kind of consolidate in here pull back um, we have a good opportunity in this trade another place to look would be in the defensive sector um, defensive sector stocks have been really really strong and we had this beautiful breakout here on Clorox CLX moving through a nice little breakout showing strength. It's up four days in a row. I would probably wait for a little rest or a pullback in this to enter a trade, but we're seeing this in a lot of the defensives, a lot of strong charts in that defensive um, area. Uh, for example, Walmart. Um, Walmart in that defensive sector. Nice move up yesterday, uh, breaking through and looking really good and strong. Coca-Cola moving up strongly. So that defensive st sector seems to be a, a very strong place um, at the moment with um, traders and investors running over there looking for a little bit of safety. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great profits. And um, sit back, relax, enjoy the show today. We don't have to trade this. If you do decide to trade, you know, make sure you plan that risk carefully um, into um, the election results. With that, everyone, take care of yourselves, and we'll talk to you all bright and early. Wednesday morning. Take care.